One tiny pistol developed in the 19th century became so notorious, it ushered in a whole new era of smaller guns. In 1865, a Derringer, a six-inch pistol small enough to fit in a pocket, was used to commit one of the most shocking crimes in American history. We all know the story. A flamboyant actor named John Wilkes Booth snuck into President Abraham Lincoln's box at Ford's Theater. He fired at the president's head from point-blank range. But the reason Booth had to get so close to his target? The Derringer. This new tiny pistol wasn't accurate at long range. It would spray bullets every which way out of the barrel. Today's Derringers may look a lot like the old ones, but they're very different inside. Cobra Firearms, located in Salt Lake City, produces about 1,500 tiny Derringers every week. This is the beginning of a gun right here. This is a barrel insert. We're going to put that important twist. The twist is called rifling, and it's one of the most important advancements in gun design. Small spiral grooves are cut inside the barrel. As the bullet travels through, it rides these grooves and begins to spin. When the bullet leaves the barrel, the spin continues, improving aerodynamic stability and accuracy. It keeps the centrifugal force of that bullet traveling in a single direction rather than it wanting to tumble throughout the air. First introduced in rifles, the process of rifling spread to other firearms, making them more accurate over longer ranges. The Derringer that shot Lincoln did have some rifling in its barrel. But that wasn't enough to make the gun accurate at short range. Early Derringers also had a flaw. The gun's barrel bores were larger than its bullets. The pistol used to kill Lincoln had a 44 caliber gun barrel. But the bullet was only 41 caliber. This mere three hundredths of an inch would cause the bullet to bounce around inside the barrel. Once it left the gun, there was no telling which direction the bullet would fly. Today, Every Cobra Derringer features a rifled barrel insert with a tighter fit. Once the rifling is complete, the barrel insert is cast into the barrel. Now we've got a raw Derringer barrel. She's going to get mated up with her frame. They're going to travel through the system and turn into a firearm. We're going to start at the all-important hinge hole. The barrel and frame are connected at the hinge hole. This allows the weapon to open and close for loading. Next, workers drill the lock hole. Once they put the lock in position, the barrel will remain fixed to the frame for firing. Derringers have been manufactured since 1852. With the Lincoln assassination, they became so popular that other manufacturers began copying their design, but with a very subtle difference. If you were to look at an actual Derringer made by Derringer, the spelling is with one single R. Now, there were attempts to copy his weapons even in the day that he made them, and they spelled the name with two R's. Henry Derringer continued making guns until his death in 1868. But Derringer spelled with two R's has now become a generic term for any small one or two round pistol. Another key difference between 19th century Derringers and today's is the emphasis on safety. Cobra strives to make their weapons as safe as possible. This cross-bolt safety that we've added to it prevents what's called drop fires. So if the firearm is ever dropped on the ground and strikes its hammer when loaded, it won't ever discharge. 28 individually machined parts go into making every Cobra Derringer. When they're all in place, the gun is tested. We will on a test each and every gun before it leaves Cobra, so the end user is going to be safe. Weighing less than a pound and loaded with 22 caliber ammunition, this Virgin Derringer is ready for its debut. Got him. From the start, the little Derringer appealed to a variety of gun toters. Gamblers could easily hide them up their sleeves and they became a favorite of women, looking for extra protection. The most common use would have been among prostitutes who would have needed to defend themselves against unwanted attacks. The Derringer remained popular, but as technology continued to improve, small handguns got even smaller and cheaper. 
Not surprisingly, criminals and gangsters embraced them, inspiring a name for their weapon of choice, the Saturday Night Special. This was the gun that you took out on Saturday night in case something happened, and if you had to, it was a throwaway piece. Saturday Night Special is a label given to an entire group of cheap, small handguns. Easy for criminals to talk before police could find them. With nearly a decade of crime-fighting experience, George Wunderlich has seen his share of Saturday Night Specials. The Astra 25 is one of those Saturday Night Specials that's gained a certain notoriety. It's very easily concealable. You can hide it in your hand. It's as thin as a wallet. This was the gun of choice. In the first half of the 20th century, gang violence exploded in the U.S. More gangsters meant more guns on the street. And the smaller, the better. For a criminal, concealment is vitally important because it allows you to both approach and retreat from a crime scene without really being able to be noticed. A small, concealable weapon gives you the advantage of surprise. Another Saturday night special the Rome RG-14 nearly took the life of another commander-in-chief. One of the most famous uses of a Saturday Night Special would have been the attempted assassination of President Reagan. And what we see here is a very small, very cheap 22 caliber revolver being used that nearly brings down the President of the United States. As these miniature pistols became more and more prevalent, the authorities stepped in to control them. The Saturday Night Special was actually outlawed from import or manufacture here in the United States. The government was compelled to get these tiny and inexpensive firearms off the streets. But it would take more than a new law to stop crime.